Do you know that there is a lot of edible food in the Swedish nature where you could make delicious recipes for free? In this new series, I'm going to show you how you can use nature food for better health. Isn't it better to eat food as medicine than medicine as food? Welcome to my channel, my beloved viewers. My name is Esti. I'm a foodist, forager and a prepper. If you're new to my channel, please make sure you subscribe with the notification bell on so you wouldn't miss my new videos. In North Sweden, the best time to pick birch leaf is late spring or early summer because that is when the leaves start to pop up. Now the leaf is at its most nutritious stage and you shouldn't pick them when they are matured. And here are the benefits. You can find this kind of tree in the nature almost everywhere in the forest. Usually they are quite easy to reach. And the next step is to dry them. I like to dry them on a big piece of cloth. Make sure there are some space in between, otherwise it will be difficult for the leaf to dry. I do not know how many of you agree, this leaf I find is quite pretty to look at especially when it's this translucent. In North Sweden, because the air is pretty dry, so the leaf doesn't really need a lot of time to dry it up. This was dried within three days, and I think it will dry even faster later summer. But again, then you don't want to pick them because they become too mature. You should be able to feel the crunchy when you squeeze them and if you don't hear that, it means that the leaf might need another one to two days more to dry. If you don't have a big space to dry this leaf indoor, you can also buy this kind of net basket to dry them in the air. And you just want to make sure that you shake them often. This will help to dry the leaf further. This is how I make my tea in the morning for breakfast. I would pick at least 5 to 6 per cup per person. So if you are 2 person, you need about 10 to 12 leaves. So you should be able to get at least 400 ml per person if you like it stronger. If you like it more mild, you can add up to half a liter per person. So this pot is about 1 liter pot, so this is for 2 persons. You want to drink them at least 2-3 to three times a day. I like to drink them once in the morning and once before bedtime. You can also put them in the refrigerator and drink them cold. This is especially good for a hot summer day. Besides picking perched leaf, I also pick needles leaf. I have earlier made some videos about needles, so do remember to check that out too. The same as perched leaf tea. I like to pick needles when they are young and tender. When handling needles, you have to wear glove, preferably double glove, because this can protect you from stinking. And it can be quite painful. Like perch, I will dry them, but instead of drying them on a cloth, I like to tie them in bundles and dry them in the air. You can dry them indoor if the weather is bad, but since the weather is so good, I'm going to dry this outdoor. Just make sure that you take them in when it's night time because the water vapor from the dew 
you will need at least four to seven days to dry, depending on how dry the air is in your country. For us living here in North Sweden, the air is pretty dry, so this takes us four to five days to dry. And here are the benefits for drinking Natal's tea. I'm going to include the link below in the video description so you can order them online. During early summer, another food that I like to pick is rhubarb. To me, I find that rhubarb is a between a vegetables and a fruit because you can either make very delicious pie uh, or lemonade and even food. So next, I'm going to show you how to make this very easy rhubarb Swedish pie. And also a super easy rhubarb curry chutney, especially good with barbecued meat. And before we can cook them, I'm going to show you how to wash them. And I'm so amazed by how big this rhubarb leaf is. And I wonder if we could use this to wrap a chicken in a barbecue. Well, I'll do some research and see if it is possible. So all you want now is to remove the leaf and keep the stems. Then you want to cut them into about 2 cm in chunks. I'll give the chutney a wash and it's ready to make the chutney. So in a pot, I'm going to put some onions. These are red chopped onions. You can add shallots if you like. And over here, I have some finely chopped ginger. So this is about one big tablespoon of fresh chopped ginger. Next, you want to add some sugar. And the amount is really up to you. If you want it to be a healthier version, you can add lesser sugar. And then about a teaspoon of salt. If you want more flavors, you can also add cinnamon sticks or star onions. But for this, I'm going to add curry flavors into my chutney. About one big tablespoon. And then you want to add some vinegar. Uh, I prefer to use balsamic vinegar because it has more flavors and it has this really rich dark color, which I really like. But if you don't have balsamic vinegar, you can also add any kind of white vinegar will do. You do not want to add any water in this chutney because it's supposed to be thick. All you need to do now is mix them evenly so that the flavors touches every part of the chutney. Turn on the heat into medium-low and you want to cook this for at least 15 to 20 minutes. As you can see, there are liquid coming out from the chutney. After 25 to 30 minutes, this is how the chutney should look like. A mastic, flavorful paste. Store them in a sterilized bottle. You can use them almost immediately, but if you cannot finish them, you can put them in the refrigerator for at least 4 to 6 weeks. Look, this sauce is perfect with barbecue, any kind of meat, even fish. To eat this chutney, it is better to have them served cold together with the hot meat. It's a really special combination and I hope you give this a try. And if you do, let me know what you think.
As for dessert, I'm going to show you how to make an easy rhubarber pie. If you have never tasted rhubarber before, let me tell you, it is pretty sour. So you want to add quite a lot of sugar. And to stop the rhubarber from um, have too sloggy, I'm going to add some corn flour. By adding the sugar and the corn flour, this will give the rhubarber a very sticky consistency. By adding corn flour or potato, this will stop the rhubarber from sweating. So, for this, you will not find a watery rhubarber layer under the pie skin. Mix well and set it aside. Now, let's make the pie pastry. I think the butter is too much, so I'm going to add a little bit more flour. I think this is the right consistency. Next, you want to spread the batter onto the pie quite immediately because if you keep them for too long, the pastry will be hardened. I do not know whether is it my pie form is too big. It didn't really cover the whole pie. But anyway, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Maybe with some space for the rhubarb to breathe can be good because rhubarb can be really wet when you cook them in the oven. And this is how it looks like after it has been baked in the oven for 25 minutes. As you can see from the side here, the rhubarber is really wet, isn't it? As you can see, the pie skin is pretty crispy. And in Sweden, this is best eaten with vanilla cream or some ice cream. This summer has been really warm, so I'm trying to cool down. On my next video, I'm going to show you this really cool cold tofu dish it's so easy to make and this dish is perfect for a hot summer day although it might look spicy but it is not at all and with the same sauce i'm gonna do another dish we try not to eat a lot of stir fried or fried food so steam food is a very good alternative for a hot summer day and this is a super easy secret recipe. Make sure you don't miss it. I hope you enjoy this video as much as I do. And thank you so much for sending me comments in my channel. Do you like cold recipes too? Let me know in the comment. If there's any dish you want me to cook in my channel, please let me know in the comment. Meantime guys, Please take care and stay safe. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.